what don't you like about Call of Duty Ghosts? <laughs> Everything is just terrible. The game's so slow paced. Uh, oh, good point, eh? So slow paced, it just encourages bad players. Another year, another failure. Same shit, different disc. Call of Duty Ghost multiplayer sucks. How surprising. Why is Call of Duty Ghosts, at least, such a bad game? I think Ghost is the worst Call of Duty. A lot of the maps on Ghost are bad. They're really big, bad, ugly. Fucking look at that texture, man. This game has what are probably the highest system requirements on the market right now, and that is just ridiculous. Ghost just feels like a fuck up, a mistake. I had to spend eight of my own dollars on this, and I want that eight dollars back. It's that bad. Well, the single player was pretty much a nosedive according to everyone in the community. The plot and the story is the dumbest I have ever heard. So however you might have expected a game called Ghosts to differ from the modern shooter routine of meaningless violence and empty spectacle, you were wrong, you idiot. Everything looks the same. Honestly, I swear to god if I just opened this game accidentally I would think I was in Black Ops 2. How can a series go on this long and always get worse? Worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. I mean most of you guys think if I touch this game it'll probably burst into flames. <laughs> I'm coming to the verdict that this game is fucking garbage. I mean, this game was so boring, you had to put clothespins on your nutsack just to stay awake playing this shit. But it's all my pre-order, you know? Call of Duty Ghost. Look at that texture, you can even read the label. I feel like I'm running around with like the worst vision ever. The maps, they all fucking suck. Pulling out a sack comic, which completely a fucking useless kill streak. You're supposed to care about it somehow. I sat myself through this because I figured, you know what, it's worth a shot. But was it worth it? No, it was not worth it at all. None of this was worth it. Well, well, well. Or should I say, wool, wool, wool. If it isn't the undisputed black sheep of the Call of Duty franchise. Unlike a traditional ghost, this game stands out like 100% does on an opacity slider. There is no amount of stealth or white smoke that can cloak this game's reputation. Fans were still pretty mixed about Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops 2, and none of us really knew how the next Call of Duty would turn out. It was a time of uncertainty. So Treyarch passed the torch to Infinity Ward. It was their time to go down the slide, and when they came down, they held up their latest creation. And people did not like the game. In fact, they hated it. They hated it some more, but not before hating it a little bit. And uh, j just to switch things up, they fucking hated it. <laughs> Although none of this seemed to affect mainstream critics' view, who live off in fucking La La Land completely isolated from the opinions of the general populace, and they just slap a 7 out of 10 or above on every Call of Duty game. Side rant over, if you do an Ask Jeeves search of the best slash worst Call of Duty games in order, you would be hard pressed to find one that doesn't have ghosts at or near the top for worst, and at the bottom of best. Ghosts would remain public enemy number one until Infinite Warfare, but even that manufactured garbage didn't change people's minds about ghosts. Now I'm going to do something a little different with this video. I'm going to review ghosts like normal with my own thoughts and opinions, that's what you're here for. And using the power of hindsight will help us in re-evaluating the game. However, I also want to put myself in the shoes of a Call of Duty fan back in 2013 and peer through that lens. By combining these two perspectives, perhaps we can discover some new intel on this game and find out why Call of Duty Ghosts was so hated. So what the hell happened here? Why was Ghosts so divisive? Did the game change too much or not enough? Why don't many people talk about the campaign or story? Did Ghosts leave a permanent stain on this franchise's reputation? Did it excel in certain areas? And most importantly, where did the hate come from and was it justified? Well, let's walk our dog through a war zone, get lost on Stonehaven, and ghost our way straight into this. Call of Duty set the gold standard for first person action in the current gen, and make no mistake, we're going to do it again with Call of Duty Ghosts for the next gen. You're a liar! You're a liar! It's not enough to just outline all the most common complaints people had with the game at the start of this video and call it a day. My job is not that easy. For most things, we'll discuss them when we get to them, like the maps, campaign, customization, etc. But what I can talk about right now is expectations. 
More specifically, Activision and Infinity War's complete failure to meet them. So I want to take you back and look at the seventh generation of consoles. Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo are all doing pretty well in the sales department. Each console had its own niche and crowd supporting it. A simple comparison of games between the two generations revealed an entirely new level of polish, pizzazz, and technical capabilities that demonstrated a clear upgrade. But all three of these companies really sputtered in the eighth generation. The Wii U was a bomb that couldn't capitalize on its predecessor's success. Microsoft's reveal of the Xbox One <laughs> it turned them into a complete laughing stock. And while Sony had the upper hand this time, even the PlayStation 4 didn't make for a convincing buy at launch. So what we have is a bunch of hardware that most people aren't interested in. They don't believe it's worth buying, and they don't see much of a difference. This was the boat that Call of Duty Ghost set sail and sunk in. I mean, you can really tell just how excited people were. And as a side note, there are no more death streaks. <laughs> Now, I understand, it's tough creating a game for two different generations simultaneously. That probably put more of a stranglehold on what Infinity Ward could do with the game. But that's not gonna bail them out here. At the same time, modern shooters were kind of dying out. Gone the way of the rhythm games and the dodo. Ghost just felt like yet another modern shooter. Not some top-of-the-line, next-gen first-person shooter it was claimed to be. And new trends would appear with the unveiling of Titanfall at E3, which kind of made Call of Duty look obsolete for a little bit. Our new dog model is taken from high resolution scans of an actual SEAL Team service dog. So we have fish move out of the way when you get close to them. You know what? I take it all back. COD Ghosts was amazing and it pushed the boundaries on the most important part of game design, the graphical fidelity of dogs. Never before had we seen a game where fish actually swam away from the player. Oh. We had a new generation of consoles, and a new Call of Duty coming out, and both had failed in the eyes of the public to innovate in noticeable ways. We were not impressed. But outside factors were the least of Ghost's problems. You know why they call it Ghost? Cause it's a ghost of its former self. Hey, that really sucked! I'm not sure which is more painful to endure. A story that tries to be deep, but doesn't make any sense, or a story that's just plain boring. Luckily, COD Ghosts gives us a taste of both. It looked fairly promising from the trailers. Soldiers stand against their enemies, but ghosts haunt them. Surprise, motherfucker! They even bragged about their Academy Award-winning writer who wrote the film Traffic. I mean, shit, a focus on the ghosts? running special ops missions based on stealth. I mean, look at how fucking cool they look. All the art is just like, mm, I want to be that guy. The campaign has a somewhat promising start. We're told the legend of the ghosts, how a group of 60 men stood down a force of 500 with the objective of defending a hospital. Oh, great group of guys. The visual presentation is what impresses me the most. The way those bullets streak through the bodies like passing through jello, how the bullets of black greatly outnumber those in white, illustrating their fight against the odds. Every shot has a unique composition that tells a tale of how a small group of soldiers transformed into an ethereal, lethal force. This game has a unique style, and the artist did a kick-ass job with the overall aesthetic. Thing is, I love watching these cutscenes, but I don't like listening to them. The expository dialogue actually takes away from the impact of the story, although I understand its necessity because then it cuts to a nice picnic area between a man and his two sons. He called them ghosts. And this really happened. So the legend goes. Come on, Dad. You don't honestly believe that story's true. Bitch, where do you think the plot is headed? Yes, son, I brought it up for no reason at all. No fucking reason at all. Just, just to waste your time. You should be more like your brother and keep your mouth closed so you don't disappoint me with your moronic fucking questions. Also, you're adopted. Come on. Let's head back to the house. While we're walking home, let's take a second to introduce our characters. Elias Walker is the dad, Hesh Walker is the brother, and you're Logan Walker, the other brother. Anyways, in the span of three minutes, we go from a nice day in the park to the apocalypse. That's pretty jarring. It's old. It's old. And right away, it becomes apparent that the silent protagonist shtick is not going to work out for this game, because it's essentially a story about brotherhood, two brothers in particular. 
But how can we experience the depth of this relationship when one side of it is incapable of communication? What they really wanted in this game, in Call of Duty Ghosts, is they wanted emotional reality. You know, they wanted these characters to feel real, to feel like real people. It creates a disconnect that lasts from beginning to end. What the hell is that talking about? What's Odin? Hey, maybe it's one of those plot devices that never has a real explanation for its existence. I fucking knew it. So the Walker brothers, no, not those guys. These guys push open a door and it cuts to 15 minutes earlier. We're in space now because that's the Call of Duty cycle. Oh, I'm really looking forward to going home. What's it been? Three months? Oh yeah, I bet today is your last day before retirement too, eh? I'm sure you'll get home fine. Yeah! Oh shit, the station's been compromised. Help, we need- Wait a minute, who are these guys? I mean, it's a pretty cool set piece. A lot of fun moments as you fly around shooting bad guys. Headshot. Okay, so the Odin station starts firing on the US. And uh, hold on, why does the United States have this massive super weapon chilling up in space? And how is security so bad that a group of 30 guys can sneak a bunch of firearms onto it with nobody noticing? All right, kids, take out your textbooks, turn to page 207. The word of today is contrived. So, what's the evil faction this time? Russians? Germans? Japanese? No, it's the... The Federation. Might as well just call them Team Evil. So the premise is that some disaster struck the great energy producing deserts, which then made every country that depended on that energy obsolete, therefore giving the rest of the world a convenient reason to not intervene in this conflict whatsoever. Emotional reality. Don't get me wrong, the setting of a war-torn America is fucking awesome, and the levels are beautiful. The artists, again, do an incredible job on the landscapes and graphics. It really pulls you into the setting. But the logic is missing. In Black Ops 2, Menendez's rise to power is more convincing as it's shown how he's able to manipulate the hearts and minds of people and how he used social media and viral marketing to promote his cause, tap into the revolutionaries and win them over. More importantly, his rise to power was actually covered in some capacity. In Ghosts, you'd think a massive space station being hijacked and firing on the United States killing millions would like get the other world nations involved, but nah, the rest of the world fucks off because they don't have the most valuable resource known to man, desert energy. The Federation's rise to power is summarized in a fucking sentence. The Federation united all of South America under one banner and devoured everything in its path as it moved relentlessly to the north. We fought hard. We fought well. Out on the plains, we gave them hell. And here's another problem. How does this invasion affect the government, the news media, the citizens? Well, who cares? You came to see the ghosts, right? These important questions don't need to be answered because we're not supposed to relate to what's going on and the people affected by it. Emotional reality. Anyways, we jump forward 10 years and the United States is a wasteland. In this alternate reality, Trump has already built the wall, but it hasn't kept illegal immigrants out, and so as the new border patrol, Hess and Logan need to scout the area. Ha! Up and down, burger. Now that's clever. And as you play through, you realize, these are more open Call of Duty levels? Now ain't this a surprise. I'll talk more about the level design later, because right now our dog is murdering people. Dog model. Yep, this is Riley, that good old woofer that was showcased in the trailers and announcement videos. Now some people might have hated Call of Duty Ghosts because of this dog and how overly emphasized it was. One of the fascinating new additions to your squad is a dog. This is someone you care about. This is a squad member. But to me, Riley is the most talented, obedient dog in the world. Riley, go kill that man over there. Go sneak through the tall grass without being spotted or alerting those guys with guns. And Riley, make sure the camera is pointed towards this one guy. Riley, come ride in the tank with us and look adorable. Riley, come pilot this helicopter. Riley, cook my breakfast. Riley, do my taxes. Riley, go back in time and prevent the Holocaust. Anyways, we kill some guys, meet up with Elias, and get set to head to no man's land. And hot damn, I will say it again, this game is gorgeous. As we stealth our way through a dilapidated California, we come across a captive ghost and a man named Rourke, who is hunting the ghosts. We sneak by, head into the forest, and find a hungry pack of wolves. Gee, wonder what's gonna happen. Why, of course, a quick time event. Well, who didn't see that coming? Oh no, Riley's hurt. Oh, hey, thanks for the save. What's up, Casper? 
How you doing, Slimer? You guys just get back from Luigi's Mansion? Merrick and Keegan are a couple ghosts who recruit us to help them save their buddy Ajax, and this is where the plot kind of derails into irrelevance. To summarize, Rourke used to be a ghost, but during a mission, Elias and him get into some trouble, and he had to drop Rourke to save his own life? Whoa, what? We can't save him! Leave him, or we'll never make it. Elias, we're too heavy! Oh no, Rourke, you're too heavy! You should have lost weight! So after being publicly fat shamed, Rourke was kidnapped by the Federation, brainwashed, and now wants revenge on Elias, his sons, and the entire United States. And a ghost won't stop until he completes his mission. So that's his motivation. Now I want to ask all of you, what's the one thing any and all stories need to be interesting? Conflict. The biggest flaw with Ghost's Academy Award winning writing is the way the conflict and the bad guy are written. Ghost doesn't just brush over the motivations of the Federation, they don't even mention it. What is the Federation's ultimate goal? Why did they invade the United States? You must have no end of questions, Guardian. You know why Halo 2 had Tartarus as the leader of the Brutes? Because it's easier for the audience to understand what the Brutes are about by having a charismatic leader that represents them. Sean Yu from Mulan. Nice work, gentlemen. You found the Hun army. Ozai from Avatar The Last Airbender. Barbosa from Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> what are you looking at? Back to work! These leaders have a lasting impact on their respective stories because of how they take charge of the factions they lead. Agreed. Rourke doesn't do shit to represent the Federation. I don't even know what the connection is. He's the worst villain in the franchise by far. And this organization is given almost no screen time or development. The soldiers are barely characterized at all. I mean, we did interrogate one Federation soldier. Where is he? I don't know what he is! Oh, what's set. that? Let's go. You don't have a passport? <laughs> Who are the leaders? I mean, you're talking about an entire continent rising up, banding together, and invading the nation above them. Obviously, someone has to be in charge of all that, and it ain't this fucking guy who was just brainwashed. If we don't care about the conflict, then we don't care about the characters overcoming it. And if we don't care about the characters, we don't give two shits about the story. And if we don't give two shits about the story, then why am I talking about it? The rest of the game is inconsequential filler up until the last few missions where we settle the score with Rourke. So he captures the gang, tortures us and Elias, and then... Let's see if I can change your mind. Oh no! Easy, Junior. I ain't even started with you yet. Oh, fuck. I'm bleeding out. But that was literally just a plot device for drama because five minutes later he gets up like nothing is wrong. Emotional reality. Characters shrug off bullets like they're nothing. It shatters the immersion so completely. It's over. You okay, Merrick? Rip's broken. But I can move. And oh god, let's talk about the ending. You're done, Rourke. Let's finish this. Hesh and Logan assault Rourke's train because he has a train, and then we confront the man himself. It's over. Oh shit. Never mind, don't worry, Hesh. It's just a gunshot wound. I'm sure you'll be fine. After a struggle, we gain the upper hand on Rourke, and then. Logan! Do it! Now! You think he's dead? Yeah, he's probably dead. We swim to safety, and that's it. A job well done. The Federation is on the retreat. We won. Ah, what a beautiful view. I could die on this beach all day. Ow! Whoa, whoa, whoa! How the f- My arm! Ah! No. No! And that's the real ending. Rourke drags us away, presumably to brainwash and torture us just like he was. Find out in <laughs> Call of Duty Ghosts 2. <laughs> so why do people hate the Ghosts campaign? Well, because it's awful. 
It's the black sheep in terms of story too, because it doesn't connect to any other games, and it didn't even include Ghost from Modern Warfare 2. One of the biggest disappointments was how the marketing in the intro portrayed the campaign. It led us all to believe we'd be playing as a stealthy group of soldiers who used guerrilla tactics to win fights. And while those sections do exist, and they're pretty awesome in their own right, they're overshadowed by the typical one-man army gun down everyone you see type of gameplay. It's got 18 missions, which is a hell of a lot, an Academy Award winning writer, next gen technology, how did it turn out so bad? It's decisively average with the gameplay too. All the different scenarios and set pieces are well constructed and entertaining. It was fun flying around space and shooting guys. And the actual pacing of the levels reminds me a lot of COD 4, because Ghost puts a lot of emphasis on the build up to the firefights. But there's a reason nobody talks about this campaign. Hesh, Logan, Elias, Merrick, Rourke, that other guy. It's just not a compelling story. And here's something I should have brought up a long time ago. Not every game and story needs to have a huge amount of depth. No, some stories can just be fun. If it's got deep storytelling or it's a blast to play through, then I'm on board. But Ghost doesn't have either of that. It's cartoony, contrived, and we could spend all day picking apart this disaster piece by piece. That's why it was so forgettable. That's why the campaign was so hated. Ghosts easily has the most bizarre take on the COD formula, but let's talk positives first. Gunplay is instantly familiar and feels heavier in a good way. There's a huge variety of weapons, sound effects are beefy. A prepubescent teen could grow a full chest of hair overnight listening to these gunshots. Animations are top notch, and that deserves some clout. Leaning was an interesting idea at the time, and when you scope in, there's now a blur effect on the outside instead of just a pure black outline. And you can even slide into the action with Call of Duty Ghosts! A neat mechanic that would return in basically every game after this. There was a squad mode, which allowed you to create loadouts for bots, set them against each other. That's weird, who cares? And Ghosts also gave us some of the most pimped out DLC we've ever seen in gaming. Snoop D-O-double-G, announcer voice pack. You just laid them busters down, but there's another round. Now if that ain't the shiznit, then I don't know what is. Pour out a little liquor for your sentry gun. They also got Arlie Ermy as the drill instructor. And for three papers? Hell yeah, son, that's a damn good deal. Perk system is fly, but not super fly. I can dig it, yo. And this system is entirely unique to ghosts. Perks cost a set number of points, so you could choose a few stronger ones or a bunch of weaker ones. You can sacrifice equipment and weapons for more perk slots. There's a whole bunch of perks to play around with. You can really carve out a unique playstyle. There's lots of game modes. Even some new ones like Grind, which was basically Headhunter from Halo Reach. It's decent fun. Then they had Search and Destroy, The Big Boy, which is one of my personal favorite modes in the franchise. It's s and D but you can save your teammates and deny respawns to your enemies by collecting dog tags. One thing you might not know is that COD Ghost advocates for hardcore drug abuse with its new mode, Cranked. Cranked. In TDM, you score a kill and it, it feels satisfying, yeah? When you score a kill in this mode, you get cranked. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Oh, 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 oh I'm cranking now, boys. Oh, dude, that's some good crank. Ghost was also the first to introduce soldier customization changing outfits, headgear, and all sorts of accessories to choose from. You can even pick one of the classic characters like Captain Price, Makarov, and Soap McTavish, of course if you pay a nominal fee. Whoa, 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 what is this? Women and minorities in my Call of Duty games? Who decided to put so much politics into this game? On a more serious note, let's talk negatives, i.e. the rest of the game. Fans were upset because CTF wasn't in here at launch, and neither was Search and Destroy. Unfortunately, Ghosts has the sorriest progression and leveling system I've seen. Squad points are cool in theory, but the problem is you unlock whatever you want, no matter your level. Sounds nice, but it makes ranking up feel incredibly unsatisfying. Weapon progression is lame as hell too, dog. Want an attachment? Uh, just go ahead and buy it. Who cares? No kills or time required. That's just straight wiggity whack, man. Now I'm saying? When a game gives you everything, it doesn't feel like you're working towards something. And with the prestige system having you start a new character instead of restarting entirely, there's no longer a tough decision to make on if you want to re-unlock everything. It sucks. Fans wanted to grind, and they didn't get it. Additionally, Ghosts has some of the shortest kill times. Yeah, people complained about short time to kill in a COD game. But it's a valid complaint. The game is super twitchy. It's like they were prototyping the hardcore modes and then just never turned it off. 
Combined with how rare it is to see people, there really is not much action to be found in the multiplayer. Balancing is alright, but every COD game has its shitty, overpowered playstyle that damn near everyone uses and frustrates the hell out of everyone else. And now it's camping with a thermal scope. Why is this so common? I'll tell you later. If you're not yes, camping, you're not it. playing ghosts, honestly. Because <laughs> that was the main no, problem. No, I was going to say, no, if you're not placing on your Savcom pizza box and uh, camping with a dog, you are truly not playing COD Ghosts. You know what bugs me? The way this shit is displayed. Having 80% of the camos and reticles consist of paid content with that stupid green symbol is pretty fucking annoying to look at. There's so much garbage in this game and it takes away the fun of working to unlock camos. But shit, at least you can smoke up, homie. <laughs> Now let's talk streaks, the same system returns from MW3. Most of the streaks are pretty average, but what players really hated was the SATCOM. A strange twist on the UAV where you have to put it on the ground, and even then, you needed two of them to get the standard UAV effect. Yeah, there's a reason they never implemented this in future games. Killstreaks are very underwhelming overall. We went from EMERGENCY AIRDROP ON A FUCKING WAY to I guess there's an A-10 strafe run or something, whatever. Field orders were also hated because they allowed dumbasses like me to do this. I got a freaking chem strike for stabbing a guy. How is that fair? In a nutshell, the multiplayer was divisive for the ways it altered progression, prestige, kill times, the disappointing score streaks, and every other aspect. People expected things like weapon perks, theater mode, to return, and they didn't for whatever reason. The multiplayer might have had some good changes, but it lost a lot of parts of that Call of Duty identity we all know and love. Which brings me to my next subject. So, what does sexy ol' act man think about the map design and ghosts? This is easily the most common and fiercely despised aspect of the multiplayer. Now the question is why? You might expect that based on what I've said in the past that I'm going to instantly love the maps and ghosts because hardly any of them are three lanes, but you'd be WRONG! However, their immense size doesn't complement Call of Duty's fast-paced gameplay. Let's face it, you don't buy a COD game, hop in a multiplayer match, and then make long methodical decisions about how to approach the enemy's position. Maybe in search and destroy and search and rescue to a greater extent, but for the most part, no. This is not Rainbow Six Siege, or even Battlefield. Most COD fans want to jump into a match and just run around shooting people. That's fine. But when your maps get in the way of that simplistic fun, that's when people get upset. Stonehaven, for example, probably the most hated map in franchise history. It's massive, and because of the size and sight lines, the game heavily encourages camping with sniper rifles and or thermal scopes, which makes it all the more aggravating if you don't favor that playstyle. Stormfront in TDM is a chaotic clusterfuck. On some maps, it's nearly impossible to predict the spawns or get a general idea of the enemy's position, so you end up running around flailing your crosshairs all over the place like a chicken with its head cut off. The flow is just awful. When you look at the overhead designs of maps and other games, you can see the logic behind it. I might bitch and moan about the nature of three lane maps, but they work for a reason. It makes it simple to find other players. But when you look at the maps in Ghosts, it, it's like they just scribbled a bunch of lines all over the place. It's a fucking mess. I mean, do you need all this extra space over here? Let me put this in bold text so it's absolutely clear. The maps aren't bad but they're bad for Call of Duty. You don't have access to Ghost's full potential unless you have 8v8 or 9v9 matches, the maximum amount of players. And nobody in matchmaking had that. You needed custom games. So naturally people are gonna hate the maps because they can't find anyone to shoot. In short, yes. The larger maps are too big. Matches go on for too long and that fast-paced gameplay loses power. Where Ghosts constantly drops the ball in substance and gameplay, it is always spot on artistically which is something I don't think this game got enough credit for. A very underrated aspect of map design is the story of the map itself. This is left up to player imagination, and when you look at Tremor, you see all these missing posters, writing, and art on the giant wall, similar to the Berlin Wall. It's a minor detail, but they even had handicapped parking signs. It's like all these details are really unnecessary, and most people probably didn't notice or care to look at them. But it's something I appreciate. Whiteout is like a fishing dock with these sick log cabins decked out with all sorts of pelts and paintings. Some homies were even having a poker game. There's a helicopter with spinning blades that you can kill yourself on. Now how cool is that? Sovereign might be a factory, but it's actually cool. All futuristic and shit. There's a conveyor belt building tanks as the match goes on. 
Additionally, sometimes they got unique gimmicks. The maps are dynamic. It's not always a plus though. Free Fall is set in a collapsing building and periodically shakes the camera around which really messes with your aim. But in Strike Zone, when a player gets to chem strike, it changes the map entirely and aesthetically. In Warhawk, you can use a breach charge on a door to open a pathway. And on Freight, you can open and close doors that reveal new areas. So say what you will about how these maps play, not one of them is lacking in style, charm, and detail. It's the startling contrast that makes Ghost so unique. It's a far cry from the blocks on a grid with three lanes and two story heights archetype that has become synonymous with the Call of Duty brand nowadays. The effort is here, it's just misplaced in certain areas. Something must have gone horribly wrong in the testing process of these maps. I have no idea what they were thinking. Which one of you shoes is just over here? Oh, what the fuck? There's an underwater um, part of this map? Oh, yeah, yeah there's underwater. Oh, God. Yeah, if you fall in the water, you drown. So hey guys. Oh, no. Oh, God. Reaction? Is it worth going back to play the multiplayer all these years later? <laughs> but if you've got the capabilities to host some custom games, you might find some enjoyment you never did before. For a long time, Infinity Ward had been looking for an answer to Treyarch's Nazi zombies. Well, apparently Spec Ops and Survival from Modern Warfare 3 wasn't, uh, just wasn't good enough for some reason. And so they made something completely new, Extinction, Infinity Ward's third attempt to one-up Treyarch, and what has been called Ghost's best feature nowadays. Whether or not that says much is up to you, but it doesn't. Now I went into this mode totally blind, had no idea what to expect. My first match, so much fun. I explored the map with childlike exuberance. What's this? What's that? Weapon upgrades? Special ammo? Gimme, gimme, gimme! I shot at aliens and frantically ran around them for 30 minutes before my organs were finally harvested without my consent. I immediately wanted to play again, but then it hit me. Would Extinction play out the same way every time? If it did, the mode would get older faster than Benjamin Button. So how does it hold up after six years? Well, you're thrown to the wolves, or should I say cryptids, almost immediately. And in points of contact, the first mission, there isn't much story to go off of. Ain't seen anything like this before. Jesus, don't let that stop you from smearing it all over yourself. It takes place in an alternate timeline, because every Call of Duty game needs alternate timelines, where the Odin strikes accidentally unleashed an ancient breed of aliens upon the world. So what's a nameless character supposed to do? You need to use the drill to take out the hives on your way to the crater. Arm that nuke and haul ass back here. There's apparently a story here, but it's in the DLC, so fuck that. Character and dialogue is an unfortunate reminder of COD World War II zombies. Extinction is more or less zombies and survival mashed together. In a lot of ways, it's one of the most unique side modes we've seen in the series. Instead of surviving for as many rounds as possible like a plebeian, the map is linear progressive. You can take time to explore, and the cryptids periodically spawn while you do to keep things interesting. When you activate the drill, it also starts a holdout style of gameplay, and you have to protect the drill from the cryptids. As you advance through the different areas, new enemies appear. Sometimes a helicopter flies above to help you into the next area, and each area is dynamic and different from the last. Customization is there, but not as fleshed out as I'd like. You level up and unlock new skills, like different types of ammo, crates, turrets, weapons, etc. There are four classes to choose from, each with a unique set of skills and playstyles. I do like the strategic aspect of talking with your team and planning what class you're all gonna play. It adds some depth and teamwork. You earn Skrilla just like in survival, but there's not as much to do with it. You're able to buy weapons, activate traps, call in helicopters, and use special abilities. Though light, what I really enjoy about Extinction is the emphasis on surviving. You can scavenge supplies and caches around the map that could contain cash, special ordnance, attachments. It makes it fun and rewarding to explore. Score! Zombies and Spec Ops and even the campaigns are more traditionally geared towards grounded combat. So it messes with your sensibilities a bit, in a good way, to see these cryptids hopping all over the place. They jump on street signs, gallop over buildings, charge towards you. It gives a newfound level of verticality and openness to the map. The cryptids have all sorts of diverse roles. Some are strong and armored, others weak and nimble. I just about pooped my pants the first time I saw a rhino. Holy tits, that was an experience. 
Problems arise the moment you realize the layout is the exact same shiznit for each playthrough. Go down the path, kill the aliens. Had the developers maybe made more maps, the mode wouldn't have bored me after the fifth playthrough. There is no excuse for three studios with massive funding and on a brand new generation of consoles to only give you one map and then sell you four additional ones for 15 bucks. I always think back to Black Ops 1, which had Kino Dare Toten, Classified, and Dead Ops Arcade. Perfect amount of content, more than I expected. Because if you don't like one map, at least you have another. As a solo experience, Extinction starts out fun and quickly transitions into aggravating. When you're on your own, you never have enough time to reload, to outrun the zombie aliens, to repair the drill. It becomes tedious. At a certain point, the game doesn't stop throwing cryptids at you and you can't shoot your way through when you're holding the drill, so what I'm trying to say is you get to a certain point in solo play where you just get fucked. <laughs> The finale is pretty epic though, you arm the nuke and have a limited amount of time to run back to the start. It's intense. But when you beat the level, it's like, what's next? Play it on a harder difficulty? Chaos mode? That might satisfy for a bit, but it doesn't for long. At the end of it, some fans might have enjoyed Extinction more so than the multiplayer and campaign, and it has its role as a unique side mode that combines survival and zombies. But I feel like Neversoft missed out on so much potential. If they made it more replayable, given us more maps, it probably wouldn't have gotten much hate at all. Who knows, maybe it was just too bizarre and off the beaten path for most fans to sink much time into it. I spent way more time in Spec Ops and the other Zombies modes than I did here, but I see its appeal, and I understand why people want to see Infinity Ward or even another team take another swing at Extinction. Call of Duty Ghosts still sits at the loser table during lunch, and it probably won't ever sit with the cool kids. When viewed through the lens of hindsight, it seems like people are starting to warm up to this game a little bit. Maybe that's just because the last few releases have been so awful. Black Ops 2 and Modern Warfare 3 had their fair share of criticism at release, but have since been reappraised. On the other hand, Ghosts is still very much hated. To me, it lacks a lot of depth that made games like Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, World at War, Modern Warfare 1, 2, and 3 replayable to this day. You probably won't find matches beyond TDM, so it's unlikely the game has any steam or life left. But did Ghosts deserve all the hate? In some ways, yes. But people have a tendency to overreact with these things. How much of that hate was toxic frustration and how much of it was genuine criticism? It's hard to tell. Ghosts is caught in this awkward in-between where nobody really has a desire to go back and re-experience the game. I only did it because people asked me to. And there's no nostalgia factor here. Nobody is wishing they could return to the glory days of Call of Duty Ghosts. At the time of its release up until the present day, everything Ghosts did or has done was better implemented elsewhere in the franchise. The single player is average and the storytelling even worse. Rourke and the Federation fall flat as villains, and I never felt like I was rooting for the main characters to succeed. The game was still a financial success, but you can clearly tell that Infinity Ward and the other dev teams took notice of all the hate this game got. I think that's why we started to see this downward spiral in creativity after Ghosts. For what it's worth, Ghosts tried a lot of new things, some of which would be adopter in later games, and others that thank god never made a return. Most of the changes weren't accepted by the fan base, and that's why it has the reputation it does. Multiplayer has some interesting ideas, and the guns feel awesome, yet there's so much weirdness within the progression and map design that it takes away from that addicting Call of Duty feel. Once you take out the grind, you lose people. And while Extinction has its moments, there isn't enough content to justify replaying the same map so many times. With a series like this, it's hard to tell how fans are going to react. How do you judge good change from bad? Ghosts is a testament to how fickle the balance is between pleasing your fan base and incurring their wrath. The game didn't leave much of a lasting impact on the franchise aside from, oh dear god, remember when they tried that? Wasn't that just awful? And that is why Call of Duty Ghosts was so hated and bad.